when you think of artificial intelligence, what do you see? Do you see the Terminator? Arnold's bright red eyes staring frighteningly into your soul? Or maybe you see a young tech entrepreneur with a laptop, furiously typing away with the hopes of starting the next billion dollar company. Or maybe it's a shiny Tesla moving entirely of its own accord through the city streets, a ghost driver at the wheel. Whatever you see, it's undeniably something futuristic. AI is disrupting every industry we know today. Image recognition lets computers classify and process millions of images in the blink of an eye. It's behind how self-driving cars can see. Natural language processing, which allows computers to recognize words and form complex sentences, powers countless virtual customer service chatbots. AI is helping us solve problems faster and more efficiently than any time before in human history. Some predict that AI will automate many of our jobs away, that nothing is safe. Whether you're a cashier or a lawyer, artificial intelligence is coming for you. Is any job safe? Surely there are things that artificial intelligence can't do. What about discovery? You can't automate serendipity. You can't capture creativity in an algorithm. As a technologist and innovator, I feel comfortable that a robot won't be replacing me anytime soon. But I do see tremendous potential to leverage automation to help me accelerate that discovery. What is discovery? And more importantly, how long does it take for a discovery to make impact? I develop clean energy technology, new materials to convert CO2 into renewable fuels, or new ways to produce clean hydrogen more cheaply. This is some of the most capital intensive areas of research and development that exist. It takes years and often millions of dollars for a clean energy technology to make it out of the lab and into the marketplace. Energy is massive. Let's compare a few of the world's inventions over time and see how long it took for these technologies to become adopted by society. Researchers at the Imperial College London compared the historical timelines of innovation over a range of different technologies. The car was invented in 1885. It took 20 years of development before it was commercial. It took another 50 years before it was widespread in society. In total, it took 70 years from invention to impact. As technology has gotten better and we have gotten smarter, consumer-based products like the cell phone and TV have become easier to go from invention to impact. The cathode ray TV took 44 years of development and commercialization, whereas the LCD TV took only 20 years, less than half the time. However, if we look at new energy technologies, nuclear, solar, wind, it still takes about half a lifetime from invention to impact. To put this into perspective, many of the world's countries have committed to net zero CO2 emissions by 2050. That's 30 years. We don't have half a lifetime to develop the next generation of clean tech to help us solve climate change. We can't wait four decades of traditional discovery, development, and commercialization. We need these solutions now because time is running out. There are many stages to go from discovery to impact. And at any one of these stages, a company can fail, a technology can falter, a market can change. After discovery comes development and demonstration. You make a prototype and then you try to make it bigger. For digital technologies, this can be easily done. To make a killer app, you need a good idea, a talented programmer, a laptop, and a lot of coffee. But to make the next revolutionary clean energy technology, you need multiple iterations of a material. Then you need to build that material into a device, and then you need to build that device into a system. Each step adds another zero to the number at the end of that cost. For clean tech, this cost value is exponential. 
Very few make it to the other side. Very few become Tesla, which only recently became profitable. And only after clean energy becomes profitable can it begin to make an impact on our society. To understand why this takes so long, let's take a look at the discovery process to find a new clean energy material like a battery or a solar cell. I like to think of making a new material like baking, except you don't know the right recipe to make the best cookie. First, we start with an idea or a hypothesis on how to make this new material. Then, we come up with a recipe to make this new material. We can then synthesize this material by reacting different precursors, basically baking with our different ingredients. Next, we process the material or put it into a device. We then characterize it. We take measurements of the material to see what its properties are. And then we test and evaluate it. We run electricity through a battery or shine light on a solar cell. We record those readings and analyze that data. All of this is just one cycle of discovery. We do this over and over and over again until we find the best material, or at very least, one that is better than before. This process of discovery can take many months, years, or even the span of an entire PhD. A scientist often has to do this process repeatedly, multiple times, just to make sure that their measurements are re reproducible and that their discovery is legitimate. This process of trial and error is at the heart of discovery. Scientists will often run on this never-ending hamster wheel, chasing their eureka moment. Some never find it. Can we accelerate this discovery? How can we run through this cycle faster and find more eureka moments? Not surprisingly, my answer to this question has to do with artificial intelligence. There are three massive advances that have led to a revolution in digital technology. First, we live in a digital world where computing power has grown exponentially over time. This doubling of computing power and shrinking of microchips is called Moore's Law, and effectively it means we have more computing power in the cell phone in our pockets than existed in the rockets that brought man to the moon. Secondly, we live in a world full of data. Artificial intelligence algorithms are only as smart as the data they learn from. The more data there is, the smarter the AI. Needless to say, we live in a data-rich world that is only getting richer. Lastly, robotics has become more sophisticated, powerful, and cheaper than ever before. What used to be science fiction, such as a robot dog, is now available online for purchase to be delivered right to your door the very next day. Imagine if we could take that cycle of discovery and supercharge it. First, we can use robotics to automate the synthesis and processing steps. These are repetitive tasks that often need to be done multiple times to be confident in the answer. Here, a robot can be faster, more accurate, and more consistent than a human. Next, we can use artificial intelligence to process that data and predict which experiment to do next. This is where the real magic happens. When a scientist goes through a loop of discovery, they will typically change one parameter here or there based on scientific intuition. Their decided next step is often one informed by trial and error, emphasis on the error. What AI can do is find complex correlations hidden in the data. Scientists are finding out that as AI get, gets more data, it can find the optimal answer in far less steps than a human can. As this cycle continues, sped up by robotics, the AI gets smarter and smarter. It gets closer and closer to the best material and faster than any human can. Researchers at the University of British Columbia and the University of Toronto have already built a self-driving lab to discover new materials for next generation solar cells and LED lights. This robot walks through all the steps of discovery. It plans which material to make. It mixes the ingredients, synthesizes the material, tests its properties, 
records its data and predicts the next material to make, all within just 20 minutes. To do this same set of experiments manually could take an entire afternoon. This is a factor of acceleration of at least 10 times. An acceleration factor of 10, imagine that. Instead of 20 years and $20 million to find and scale the next clean tech material, it'll only take two years and $2 million. Scientists could experiment faster, discover faster, and spend more time thinking about the why and how rather than running on the wheel of trial and error. This is just one example of these materials acceleration platforms that are springing up all over the world. Each of these are focused on developing new clean energy materials, batteries, thermoelectrics, hydrogen catalysts, carbon capture and conversion, each of them with robots racing against the climate change clock. At the National Research Council of Canada, the government of Canada's national labs where I work, we're betting big on the future of the self-driving lab. In collaboration with partners, we're building a brand new facility near Toronto, focused entirely on accelerated materials discovery. We're building the next generation of AI-powered self-driving labs to help us discover new clean energy materials. You may be thinking, if we build self-driving labs to do research, won't the jobs of scientists be automated away by AI? But as I said earlier, you can't capture creativity in an algorithm, at least not yet. These self-driving labs are tools to help scientists, not replace them. We still need scientists and researchers to frame the problems, develop the technology behind these self-driving labs, and then figure out solutions to scale and implement these new technologies. Because of the pandemic, we've all been forced to work from home. The momentum of discovery in labs across the planet has halted. Instead, imagine a future where a scientist can orchestrate experiments and progress her research through an app on her phone. Imagine a future where new discoveries and innovation is more accessible and inexpensive, where discovery is decentralized. Innovation is the engine to economic prosperity and growth. Imagine if every country in the world could innovate to tackle climate change faster. Think of the wealth that could bring and the emissions that could be avoided. The future is coming fast. It's racing towards us. And while I believe it'll be self-driven, only we have the power to set the destination.